University of Healthcare to introduce um, Dr. Stephen Buttigieg, who's a specialist trainee at the Ministry of Health in Malta and co-chair of the World Federation's Digital Health Working Group. And as of about uh, three days, he's also on the governing council of the World Federation. Uh, welcome, Stephen. Hi, everyone. So, quick question. Who has Twitter here? The ones who don't have, we need to talk afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so, this part, uh, so, we are living in a post-truth world. And I know it's going to be a bit boring, but when you think about post-truth, what do you think about? You think about something where it is framed, you know, as a fact, and it appeals to the emotion. That's something which is, you know, convincing, but it, it goes far away from policy or the actual scientific truth. But I want you to remember three words, appeals to emotion. Keep that, repeat it in your mind, and it keep on going. So, you all know how post-truth ends up with, you end up with a bus like this, with a picture and a depiction of a drawing quite late, uh, quite early, so this is not quite an old picture. I don't know from which century exactly, but it basically displays all the possible, like the, the, all the perceived dangers of vaccination, where you have like a pig coming out from a hand, from a woman's hand, or so all these different depictions. We also have the, the very famous uh, genetic modified organisms debate as well. But I'm not here to talk about what happened, about the negative things. I'm, I'm talking about, I'm going to talk about what we can do to communicate our vision and mission better. So I'm going to propose to you the KEEP checklist. And this checklist will help you as a public health professional to first of all know your audience, exercise empathy, Engage on an individual level and prepare for scale and invest. I'm, I could also say keep calm and move on, but you know, this looks a bit more catchy. So I'm going to go into each and every one of these and try to explain one. So know your audience. And today it's really easy to do this because, for example, you can use something like Google Analytics to actually analyze your audience and even do audience segmentation. So I, I highly recommend you actually analyze as well those kind of tools. And you can do even this with your, the academic research that you've already been doing for such a long time. Understand your audience, what are they looking for? Do qualitative interviews, message. try to understand why are they reasoning in this way. Exercise empathy. The worst thing that we can do is alienate our audience by telling them, you are wrong. How would you react to that? You would definitely shy away. You wouldn't want to talk again. You would bear a lot of resentment. And at some point, especially when the right time comes up, you'll go with all your fury against something which you believe in. So exercise empathy. Engage on an individual level. How are we going to manage to convince our audience that, listen, vaccines work. Is it just a tweet? Is it just a Facebook post? Is it just a YouTube video? No. It's all about engaging on an individual level. Like saying, hi Michael, listen, I believe that vaccines could really do a difference in your life. Doesn't that sound better? But we are living in a growing world with an aging population. So there are technologies you can use, something as simple as a live stream, for example. For example, like right now we're live streaming from two different devices. And through this live stream, you propagate your message that you're doing on an individual level, on your own name, to the outer world. Something very simple, but can have a really massive impact. The active actors are doing it on an individual level. Why not us? I can ask you that question. So, are there great case studies that we can learn from? I'd like to propose to you a really great, great, great YouTube channel called Kursgesagt, which in German actually means in a nutshell. And one of the actual videos right now is it in the side effects of vaccines. How high is the risk? 
But inherently, that kind of video, which most probably att attracts that kind of audience, which wants to find something wrong about vaccines, then they will actually find out how important vaccines are and how effective and how necessary they are. Also, I really love this uh, website as well. From uh, it's, it's, a con it's a blog. It's a blog actually. It's called Vaccine Today. It's a news portal, and they issue news on a very, very regular basis. And on a somewhat controversial note, but funnily enough, extremely effective to the Italian audience, Roberto Burioni. So this guy is really quite aggressive in the way he speaks. But funnily enough, it really resonates with the Italian audience. So something to. Uh, to have a look for. And I think that WHO has done impressive steps forward with curating their social media presence, especially WHO, and as you can realize, they have 4.8 million followers. They're doing something good, right? So, how do we get from there? Find your audience, embrace and repurpose your content. You don't know how much content you have already created through your publications, through your academic work, through your, possibly, you might have already written your very own blogs, you have done so much already. Use that content, take it out there. Focus your energy. And how do you focus your energy? By knowing your audience. So, for example, in my case in Moata, where is my audience? It's on Facebook. But my public head audience and my global head audience, that's on Twitter. That's a totally different question. And so, make sure you go there, but find out where your audience is, because you might be, you don't know where your audience is, and you might be talking to a blah, 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 it might be going back and forth to focus your energy, and reach out to your communication network. Something very interesting is the fact that you don't, you shouldn't just count on the online aspect, but you should also count on, count on the offline aspect. So, hustle. That means that you go out to your journalists and talk to them and tell them about your mission. And that journalist on his website will then publish it on their social media, which propagates your message. So don't underestimate that. It could be a radio interview. Go, go out there, ask them, listen, I have this interesting topic I want to talk about. Can I be interviewed, please, on this topic? They might say no. But at least, if you try four or five times, I can guarantee you that on the sixth time, you will get it. So there are a number of tools. You have Facebook, Twitter, Messenger. Don't underestimate also your messaging networks. It could be something like WhatsApp or Twitter. Oh, well, I apologize. It could be something like WhatsApp, WeChat for the, our lovely Chinese uh, group. It could be Sina Weibo. You know, so make sure that you understand your audience and be open. Now, something a bit more innovative, but also quite important and not to be underestimated. If, for example, you like to you like to express your voice and you have and you want to talk about your topic, you're, maybe you're better at talking rather than writing, then go for a podcast or an audiobook. If you prefer that people see your face and actually understand their expressions, go for video or live streaming. But how about repurposing your academic work with a long read, for example? You go on Medium and you set up your blog there and get it going. But I suggest one thing very important. So don't just put your blog out there. Make an effort to ensure that your work looks good and it looks attractive. So ask for help, ask for feedback. If something doesn't look that way, you know, if it's just a piece of text, long text, and that doesn't interest people, you lose their attention. But do something which actually grabs their attention as well. So ask people, get feedback. Connect with people's emotion and be consistent. Get out there and win hearts, not just minds. Thank you.